Welcome to this week's episode. Today we have a special guest with us. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, I am Kylie. I live in England and I work full time as an online English teacher, teaching English to foreign students around the world. And I'm also a travel blogger as well. Thank you so much for introducing yourself. Now, I have a few questions to ask and I'll start with the first one. Are you a certified teacher? I'm not. Um, I worked as a teaching assistant in UK schools for three and a half years. I then moved to America where I was a teaching assistant again um, in preschool. And then I took my TEFL certification. So I've got the foreign language certificate, but I've not actually studied as a proper teacher, no. All right. And what made you decide to relocate in the first place? Um, I had met an American originally, and that's what took me to America. So I went through all the visa process and everything. But like some things in life, they don't work out. And I moved home back to the UK in 2020. So back in the UK now. <laughs> all righty. Um, and just so that we're kind of sticking on the timeline of when you moved abroad to the US, mm -hmm. where was the first place you taught? It was in Iowa. So the whole time I was living in Iowa, I was working at the same school. I worked there for four years. So yeah, it was just in Iowa. That's the only place I taught in the, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> a very small, a very small school. So. Very nice. <laughs> All right. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about the process going to the US? What was it overwhelming? Um, I know you went through your partner a little bit, so the process probably would be different if someone went solo in either direction, right? From the US to the UK and UK to the US. Yeah, there, there are a couple of different visa routes. Um, there are ones where you can get sponsored through like a job or something like that. But I went through on a marriage visa. It took a year for the whole process. So it's, it's a long time, even when you're like a family member, it takes like a whole year I think at the moment with the whole COVID thing I think the wait time's even longer now so it's even even longer and even more stressful but um yeah that was the way that I went in um it, it wasn't a fun process it wasn't great and it, it was quite overwhelming but I I started applying for the school job before I left um, it was just in time for the new school year. So I literally landed and had an interview the next day and then started in the school the week later. So it was very, it was nice to have a routine as soon as I landed. So that was quite, quite nice. <laughs> that, that worked out perfectly for you. It that did. Really did. And this is why I, I, I always talk on my podcast about planning ahead, right? Because it really does save you a lot of stress and it won't be easy, but at least you'd have things set out ahead of time. So good thanks for sharing now random random question are you an introvert or an extrovert oh uh in real life i think i'm more introvert um <laughs> it's it's one of them things where yeah i'm quite nervous in front of new people like in real life but i, I get quite comfortable with people once i've been talking to them and that it's, it's easier online I, I think i don't know on youtube videos and that i'm more look like I'm outgoing more than what I am in front of a person. <laughs> Aren't we all though? Aren't we yeah. all? <laughs> now, I know you've been traveling for a while. How has traveling changed you? Oh, I just want to go everywhere. It's like I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> It started when like I did travel and tourism when I was at college. So I was I knew from quite early on that I, I was a bit of travel obsessed. And then from there, I ended up working on a summer camp in America. So I did a season as a climbing instructor. And then from there, it's just been global travels. It's just something that's always interested me. And especially now teaching online, I get to work with students around the world. So it's like, even in my job, I can travel. So it it's great. I, I just love learning about new new people and places and experiences. I just love it. <laughs> I can I can agree with you on that. I can I definitely agree with you on that. Now, how is teaching abroad different than how is teaching in England teaching from different from teaching in the US? Um, there's for language, <laughs> for one thing, there's a lot of words, especially I remember there was one 
one time when I was working in the preschool um, or pre-K as it's called in America and there was one kid and we were doing Mother's Day cards and I spelt mum M-U-M but in America it's M-O-M and I was like I'm so sorry I got it wrong and we we had to redo it but thankfully her mum was a teacher in the school so she knew who I was and she she didn't mind but I was like I can't believe I got it wrong so you're always kind of having to think of extra little things that you wouldn't normally have to think of um in a normal English school (laughs) that um, is that is great that's something to to really be mindful of and I don't think that's something that people think about when they do plan to to relocate and teach somewhere there's so many different little intricacies that we don't think about culturally or even with language yeah even things like saying go and put your rubbish in the bin (laughs) it's like in America it would be go and put like your trash or your garbage in the garbage can so it's just little things that you kind of have to think hang on a minute I've got to say this the right way but um yeah it's all fun (laughs) very good very good um now this is a bit of a tricky question um because I'm more asking of some challenges you faced when you came to the U.S. so Name two challenges you faced when you relocated to the U.S. Um, I guess one of the biggest differences was the whole healthcare system. Um, like in the UK, we get the NHS, which is the National Health Service. It's kind of paid for in our taxes. It's not a huge amount of money. And when you then go and get anything done or you see a doctor, it's completely free so to speak but in the US there was the whole thing of having to try and find an insurance and then you're only covered for certain like hospitals or doctors so that that was huge and it was almost it was almost like 50 percent of my wage working in a school it's like the health insurance I didn't get it as a benefit so I had to pay extra for it and so that was a huge thing because it's like it just took all your money <laughs> it's like what <laughs> and it's something I re- didn't really use much I'm quite a healthy person but it was just a lot of much mu- like a big expense for something you wasn't really using so that was one big challenge um I also had to retake my driving test I'd been driving for like nine years in the UK but then I then had to take the test again to get like another license um it was quite easy the driving test in America is a lot easy Uh, than what it is in the UK so it's just little things like that like general day-to-day stuff that you dealt with years ago like when you were like 18 you're now having to redo as like a late 20s adult (laughs) understandable believe me I would not want to take it again either (laughs) Um, now my question here um, relates to you going back to England so what made you ultimately go back one of, one of the biggest things, it was the whole COVID-19, all the lockdowns. It was kind of one of my fears that I would get trapped in a country um, because I couldn't get back to my family and things like that. Like if anything was to happen, I was like, it's obvious fine. I'm just a plane ride away. It's like I can be home within a day if I have to. And then suddenly all the borders started closing and flights stopped. And I was just like, I'm stuck. It's like, if anything happens, I can't get home now. So that was it was like a reality check that things can go wrong in the world and then you're stuck. Um, so that was one of the things where I was like, I need to get back to like where my family are. It's like, I, I don't want to get trapped as such. Um, and again, things like healthcare, it's like so much money was going on that, that you didn't have money for flights to even visit home. So yeah, it's like, it was a just a, a thing that came over time where it's like, I, I've got to go home. It's like, I need familiarity again. (laughs) Understandable, understandable. Um, Now, this is a good one. (laughs) What advice would you give to 18-year-old Kylie? Oh, wow. (laughs) Um, Everything happens for a reason. (laughs) Um, It's like, I I don't regret moving to America. It's like, at the end of the day, it put me on the path that I am now. It's like, it was somebody that I met from Wisconsin that had introduced me and said oh I'm gonna like do my online teaching thing and I was like that's that's a good idea and then it was because of her that I then even found out about teaching online and so it's like every, everything works out it's like I'm probably like the happiest that I've been ever in a job now doing this so everything happens for a reason and I know 18 year old Kylie probably wouldn't have thought I've been to 
40 plus countries <laughs> it's like I would have never thought that amazing. like looking back <laughs> amazing and that's really good advice too I wish we we, we could all tell <laughs> tell ourselves this um let's see what does a typical day look like for you uh being in the UK it works with especially with online teaching most of my students are in the far east so my morning at eight o'clock in the morning is there 4 p.m after school so it works great so i do my first english lesson at eight o'clock in the morning which is almost like a typical work day and um, i then do six back-to-back -back lessons which are 30 minutes each so three hours of solid teaching i have a 30 minute break where i have a bit of lunch I then do another six back-to-back -back lessons and I finish at 2.30 in the afternoon, which is about 10.30, 11 p.m. time in the Far East. They're all going to bed. Um, and then I tend to do a little bit of blogging work for a couple of hours. And then it's dinner and relax for the rest of the evening. So it's quite a nice routine, Monday to Friday as well. I have my weekends off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that looks like the dream schedule for many people. <laughs> I think many people would love a schedule like that. It's very, very organized. It's you, you know what you what to look forward to for your day. And it's not a long, long day until five or six. I think that's perfect. Great, great. Now, what's one question you wish I would have asked you? Oh, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That, that's up to you, whatever you want to ask. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's a good question. Hmm. I don't know. I guess being a teacher, it's probably something along the lines of like what influenced you or something like that. Like why, like what, like I, I know doing the job that I do and even like in the school, like in America and here, it's like you change people's lives. <laughs> it's like, I guess that like looking at now, it's like, that's kind of, I suppose, why I'm a teacher. It's like, you know full well like when you're like teaching somebody a second language especially English it's like you're going to help them for the rest of their life it's like especially when they like tell you that they've passed exams and it's because of your tuition it's it's like I guess that that's one of the good things about being a teacher it's like you have a lot of like influence on people's lives and it's just crazy but cool <laughs> no that's really good that actually would have been a really good question right like <laughs> what inspired you to become a teacher very good um i think on on that end for me when i have students who ask me for support with putting together um, responses for interview questions and then they get the job and they're like i got the job thank you it feels so good. So like you said, like a lot of what you do, teaching English online, it really does set people up for a lot of opportunities and it, it feels good and it is really rewarding. So good one, Thank you. real good one. <laughs> um, that actually was our last question. Okay. Um, so thanks again for, for joining me um, on the podcast. I really appreciate you taking the time, especially since we're in different time zones. Um, where can listeners find you? Uh, I have a blog. It's between England and everywhere.com. And then I am on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all with between England. So it's just a shortened version of it. And um, yeah, that's, oh, and I want to TikTok too now. I'm starting TikTok. So I'm nice. coming back to doing that. So yeah, TikTok is between England as well. So yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Thanks again for coming and everyone. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you.